I brought these two kicking and screaming over to EXP, um, um, you know, literally, because um, we, we started the company in 2008, built the company to be the largest independent in our area. Um, like Michael mentioned, we were doing actually over, uh, we're doing like about 250 transaction sites and about a, a little over 100 million uh, in our last year. We did about 105, I think, was our, was our number in 2016 prior to us coming over to EXP. So um, anyway, um, I, saw the, I saw the model at an Inman conference, brought it back home. I did a bunch of research and tried to figure out how I was going to sell them on this because I knew the minute I went to them that they were going to be well, like, why would we do this? Because we were making a decent return on our, on our you know, we were all just, you know, every quarter we'd write each other, each other, each other a check, you know, for, the, for what was in the kitty. And, you know, there was a decent amount of, of money coming back to us. Um, and the company was really, you know, the market was decent. Um, the company was, we were successful. And it was like, why would you want to make a change at this point in our, in our careers? And for us, if you run into independents that have um, partnerships, like we had, we each three had an equal share of, of the brokerage. And um, we each had our own individual duties. I was the PR. They call it an art, you know, I was designated realtor with the, with the real estate commission. So I dealt with a lot of the risk management and the, you know, stuff with the, with the real estate commission. And um, stuff. Yeah. Ed did mark, Ed did marketing for us and Conda did, um, pretty much kept us, uh, made sure we had money. So she was a smart, she's a smart one. <laughs> she's a financial one. So, uh, anyway, um, so, you know, I, I knew I was going to have to be on my, be on my best, uh, be on my game whenever I met with them to, to, to tell them we should, we should put the brakes on all this, right? And, and we should change, turn everything upside down and basically start a new model. And it went off kind of like I expected it to, like WTF, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, well. you know, this, is, this is nuts. And I was like, just hear me out. Let me, you know, started showing them the model, started showing them uh, the, um, the revenue share and talking about that, which is, which at the time was a bit confusing, you know. Um, and it's a penny stock. Still is. So, uh, and then the stock, of course, the stock at that time was not much to talk about. Yeah. It was Plus still. Plus it was only like a couple thousand agents. And yeah. You're like, who's this? Yeah. Yeah. And so Cloud brokerage and what's this avatar thing? <laughs> yeah, it was like playing a game. Like yeah, I went yeah, in yeah. and he was on his computer and it was like he was playing a video game. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, I didn't take it seriously, but the next step I took, so I took it from there when he brought it back and I analyzed all the numbers. So I took all of our agents' production numbers and commission numbers and I broke it down to a spreadsheet and I said, here's what you made with us. Most of them were on a 70-30, some on a 60-40 if they were new, some on an 80-20. That was really the top commission split we had with our agents, which is most you know, franchise splits. So I put it in a, a model and I have a spreadsheet and then I put it in an EXP spreadsheet and said, okay, here would be your expenses. You know, here would be what your commission would be, 80, 20, up to 16,000, how many transactions or transaction fees and everything. And I, we met with each agent and showed them and every single agent in our office was gonna make somewhere between 25% and 30% more with EXP. And so when we sat down and talked about it, it's like, as a company, as an independent company, we couldn't offer them this opportunity. We couldn't offer them shares of stock. It costs too much money to get an attorney and get them to make our company, you know, we couldn't do that. We couldn't offer them free shares of stock with EXP. And so just the opportunity that it gave our agents, and some of them were not very comfortable with it because... We lost one. Yeah, we lost that one. And then, you know, it. there's some that's, that still aren't totally technology and not engaged with the whole virtual concept, but they were able to adapt and they're, they're making as much or more money with EXP. Um, we haven't been able to get a lot of them, but we're going to try to go back and, and show some of the excitement that, that Micah shows with the potential for them to attract agents. Most of them have just, con have just continued producing. But, you know, with all the tools that the company is able to provide, I mean, you can't offer that as an independent company, let alone the risk management. Well, we couldn't, we yeah. Have. I mean, for me, it was, it was um, the, and when you're talking to an independent, um, and we had about, what did we have, 15 agents at that point? Right. We had about 15 agents. So, um, uh, but Conda and I were doing, Conda and I and Ed were, were doing uh, uh, the, about 50% of the company's business. 60, we were, you know, yeah. we were doing about 60 actually percent of the hundred and some odd million. So, you know, we were, we were, 
And you're going to run into different situations, as we all know. You're going to have independent broker owners that are just managers, and they don't they don't sell. We were we were selling brokers, and we were actively selling. And um, uh, they have to get over their ego. Yeah. that's the biggest thing with independence. Yeah. Ego is so, what? Not your sure. amigo. Not your amigo. Yeah, <laughs> and that's true. And so um, you know, it, it took um, it, it took some time, and it was it was an interesting process. And basically, you know, the whole way through. Um, I was using EXP resources to help me explain to them what was going on and taking them into the, you know, to the world. And we were doing um, analysis, and we, had, we analyzed the hell out of everything. You know, the Conda's really good at that. I mean, she's got the, the knack for really breaking things down, like she said. And it came down to we couldn't offer our agents, and we really loved our agents. Everybody that worked for us, it was like everybody else. It's like it was like family, They're right? Family. They were they were with us. A lot of them were with us from the very beginning in 2008. We started this company, by the way, in July of 2008. We decided to start a new brokerage, which was a great time. To start <laughs> our new yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and actually, looking back on it, it was a great time because we capitalized on on a lot of things that that were really there that that you didn't realize until you started doing this. So it was it was great, but you know we couldn't. Um, couldn't offer the, it came down to the agents, what was best for them. And what was best for them, I'll be honest with you, wasn't necessarily the best for us. However, if you look at the, we replaced basically our goal, and we haven't quite replaced it yet, but we're getting there, was to replace our, um, Dividend. our dividends off of the independent brokerage with the revenue share. And um, that's our own fault. Yeah. That's our own and fault. And we haven't done it perfectly. But I'll tell you what we did. So if you have, if you go into an independent brokerage that has a partnership, what what we decided to do, and really I think at the end of the day, after all the things were said and done, they were convinced that they wanted to do EXP. There was one thing, there was one elephant in the room that we had lunch finally one time, and it was like, I mean, they were going to leave. I mean, they they had already figured out they were going to go start their own brokerage. And, you know, I was going to have to. I mean, it was it was intense. Okay, I mean, this was not like an easy. So process. give Ryan credit. Ryan has always been on the cutting edge of finding things. All right, and we got offered Keller Williams mm -hmm. before it was in our market. Coldwell, all you know, a bunch of them all came knocking on our door, and we turned them all down. Ryan kept. You know, pushing this EXP, it's different than everything else. You know, and the thing I think that resonated with us somewhat was, you know, you looked at Amazon, you looked at Uber, you looked at people that changed the model, changed the game. And that was the one thing that kept us in the conversation, I think, to a degree we're like, and also, you know, as an independent, you got to train all your people. You got to be there. You got to have full-time staff. There's a lot of cost, expense, and headaches, and EXP answered a lot of those questions too. I yeah, and, yeah, and it came down to the, I mean, yeah, and it's very true. And and so, you know, I tried to show them, look, guys, um, kind of like whenever we did Tiger Leads. I don't know if you guys have heard of Tiger Leads. I'm sure you have. We did that in 2008. Whenever I again convinced her that we needed to spend four thousand dollars a month on internet leads in 2008, which 2008 was like. That's a long time ago, if you think about it. And you know, spending that money on internet leads was insane, but that, you know, she saw the light then too, so that was good. Um, and once she sees the light, it's like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing this, so it's like, okay. Then you have to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. And, and we didn't do it right, but I think we would be a good resource if any of you have independent companies, because we would be a great resource. We didn't set it up like her, we should rep, have she's from the very beginning. Can you tell like how you guys have it? So what we did was the elephant in the room. I mentioned the elephant in the room earlier. Yeah. Right? The elephant in the room was finally, it was like down to the wire, and we had to make some decisions. And we had lunch at Baxter's in the local area in our place. It's a restaurant where we go a lot. And so we had lunch, and it was like I'm like, what is the hang of this? Why are they not? What am I missing here? Why are they not jumping on board? I show them all the benefits. They admit that there's benefits, and it came down quite frankly to revenue share. Yeah. I was gonna be here, kind of was gonna be below me, it was gonna be below me. We, we were, we were um, breaking up our partnership, basically, mm -hmm. and, and, um, uh, and, and it was like, I was gonna benefit more, and this sounds really bad, but it's quite honestly the truth. I mean, and I, I don't it's think anything, real. it's the way it is, it's, it's the world's business, right? I was gonna be always above, they were gonna be below, and I was gonna be making money off of them, doing and recruiting other people and they didn't like that. 
And and I, I think I say that, right. and, and, and that's, and that's we're, we're all like family, we're friends, and we're partner, business partners, but business is business, right? So if you have a independent brokerage that is a partnership, um, you might want to think about doing we did. We did it, we created an LLC. In, in Missouri, you can license an LLC. I don't know what it's like in Oklahoma or uh, other areas, um, Georgia, but you can, or um, wherever you're at, it, you can license an LLC and you can, you can, that LLC can take commission and get paid referrals and that kind of thing. So we actually pool our rev share together. So I'm still the, the top, uh, I don't know who's quote. We're, we're both the We're both the We don't even, we we're like, oh. Yeah, we didn't set it up right. So we were like, Michael, we want to be nice to our agents. So we had, we had 12 really decent producing agents. If we would have known what we know now, all 12 of them would have went in his first line. Yeah. But, but we, we were did, trying to be nice. We did put five in his first line. We thought we're going to be nice and we're going to give each of those five one because that will motivate them and let them see that if they continue to recruit, it will benefit everybody. All they wanted us to do was give them people for their top line. Right. And, and then we when we didn't any, give them people, and we didn't they have get anybody upset. to tell us or I'm telling you, attack buyers. Yes. So, so. Basically, we, we pool our rev share. So, and, and I'm not saying this will work in every state. I'm sure there's a way around it in everywhere. I'm sure you can work around it. But, um, but we uh, basically what we do is every every month, I take my rev share. They take theirs, which mine's a hell of a lot bigger than theirs. But uh, the, the uh, check and it goes into uh, or we deposit it into this account into our joint account, and then every quarter we uh, we, we take what's in there, and divvy it out. So, or whatever we feel like. And like new people like you guys and, and, and you and you, the materials are amazing. We didn't have, we didn't have, we didn't have anything. We were, is it easier now? It's yeah. so easier. much easier. Yeah. And, and we didn't like it either. No, but because people like Mike and everybody elevated EXP's game. And so now you guys have real tools, real examples. <laughs> you know, we were selling Blue Sky. When there's a couple thousand agents in the country, we started it for the state of Missouri. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and us, I was the broker for the oh, first six yeah. months. What, so. what advice do you guys have? So some of these guys might be maybe intimidated to have a conversation with, you know, broker owners. So what, what advice do you guys have? I think you have to get, you have to find that way where they're going to actually listen to you. But you first have to listen to them because... When you're a broker owner, your ego is front and center. You built this company from it's nothing. Like off the chart. Right, because you created all your materials. We you had know. a lot to be proud of. I right. Mean, I mean, we, we, so. we created our websites. We didn't have KV Core or some other company that would come in and do that stuff. So we had to do everything. I think you find out their pain points because independent brokers have pain points right now. What is liability? What is it? Liability. Staff. The, yeah. Staff. Staffing, liability. I mean, having employees, having to be responsible for those employees, having to keep up with technology. So if you're an independent and you're trying to provide this stuff to your agents because they, have, they all want more and more and more and more and more and they're getting offered more from these other companies. So you can't keep up with it and do what, you know, and produce and sell and, and make money. recruit. Right. And oh, and here's the other thing when it comes to, sorry, but, no, but, but is, is that a lot of independents to keep their agents, they're on splits that they're making no money. I mean, you don't make any money on a 90-10 split. You don't make any money on a on a on a 80-20 split. It, it's hard to make money at a 70-30 split with an agent, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. most of our agents were on 70-30s or 75-25, so we were making some margin on it. But you got the 80-90 percent. If you're giving that agent 80-90 percent, you, you're making nothing. You're basically just keeping the lights on. So when you when you carried over the team and you brought them over to EXP, the the individual agents that decided to stay with you, mm -hmm. do they also have a team split and an EXP split? Most of them were independent agents. Now, no, they were all independent contractors. I'm sorry, they were all—all all of our agents were independent, Gosh, agents, like we all are. Correct. Right. <laughs> they were, Ed had yeah. a team that he, he structured his under a team. Right? He did. I we did didn't have teams before. Oh. No, yeah, I had a couple. Well, no, I had a couple team members. I had one. Yeah, you had a couple, but it wasn't a, as because our company was our team in a sense. So we weren't focused on teams as much. And then I had a couple of people wanted to do it and. They were like, oh, I want to work with, and that's how my team got started. But it really didn't take off until EXP, I think, yes. right? Okay. Because but, then all of a sudden, we, that was the hardest part at first is we separated our business because we worked together as a three-person team, and, and so now we each have our own teams. Yeah, we each have our own teams, but, you know, like I'll tell you, though, most of the independents that you're going to talk to, 
if they're if they're trying to retain their agents and and if they're they are every year they are increasingly narrowing their margin their profit margin because they have to keep giving to the other agent who's like well i can go to remax and get a 90 10 split of course they don't think about all the other fees and stuff that are in there or i can go here this guy's willing to give me an 80 20. well you only sold you only sold three we had a tier thing where if you sold this much money the previous year or if gross revenue gross sales you you you, had, you got this split right for the next year and then you had to sell that much again or you go back you know what i mean so it was anywhere between a 60 40 split up to a 80 our highest was 80 20. but some independents even go higher than that i know one agent in our area that was within the jim trowbridge he was making a 90 10 split at an independent brokerage i'm going why are they even like what so there's no a, money to be made on that guy as an independent right? brokerage you guys have your own flag your, your own brand your own mm -hmm. marketing and things yeah. of that nature when you guys came over to exp even though they were independent contractors they had their 80 20 split with exp did they still carry your flag over? Do they still carry your brand? No, we. No, they, no. That was the, the joy of it. We told them they could build their own brands, their own brand. and that was important to a lot of them because yeah. you know I'm a big proponent yeah. of the agent is who the person lists with. It's not the company. We get that from people all the time. Oh, I can't leave Remax. You know, it, it's the balloon, and I'm like, they don't care about the balloon. That's right? good. They right. care about you. Right. You are right. your own image, and EXP allows you to grow that old, own image. And all you have to do is put your the little logo down there. You know, brokered or powered by EXP, and you can build your own image, which is what you should be doing anyway. Kathy. Kathy. So, um, kind of are in mind, and you can tell me if we have to get this cut off, but um, a couple of things. One, couple minutes. Mm -hmm. I have people that say, um, well, I've got three brokers in my um, organization because I have three locations, and how am I going to pay them a salary? That's one question. I've got all of these staff members. What am I going to do with them? Get rid of them. I just can't <laughs> cut them loose and say, sit, you know, see you later, thanks for everything. Hey. And then, and then the agents, you know, some of the agents have a split with the company. So let's say agent has an 80-20 split, but that agent has agents that work for them. There's teams within the company. So then those agents that work for an individual team within this boutique, those buyer's agents per se, are at a 50-50 split with their agent. And that's all they have to give. But now they go to EXP and they have to do 50-50 plus an extra 20%. Well, so how do they overcome all of those? That's, that's a tough thing to overcome. And it, that, when it does get into that nitty gritty of analyzing their numbers, I, I almost feel like you have to get somebody, um, you know, it might even be outside of this group, but somebody that has had like large, there's lots of people have mega teams and different size teams within EXP and find out how they've structured. I'm sure they have growth people too that can work with you on how, because that gets really tricky and it gets down to where the person's gonna make like 30% and you're like, we can't tell these people we're gonna make 30%. Do they, um, I mean, do, is there somebody that can, or can you run those numbers and show them how they can, how the buyer's agents will ultimately make more? Yeah, we, I mean, we did spreadsheets with Lewis yeah. too. And we can okay, and I think you gotta look at the part that we saw too is that it's hard as an independent broker to compete with the EXPs, the Kellers, the Remaxes, with the materials, the training, technology. You know, the technology, all those things, the game's changing. And Salary. our saying was, are you going to get on the train? What was it? Uh, well, if you're not part of, what was our if you're not part of the Locomotion, or uh, I'll think of it. I'll, I'll, I'll have a picture. But anyway, but you know, but part of it was, you know, at some point you have to see the future and plan for the next stage, and the next stage is the XP. Right, and, and Ryan was lucky enough to sit down with Glenn and have him yes. give the presentation to him. Well, whenever, you have, whenever you have Glenn Sanford actually pitch with yes. you and you and Emory sit in a room together, and he's giving you the sales pitch on. on EXP, you can't help but get a little excited. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. I realize you you brought it to them. Yeah. And, and no offense, three egos when you've got three yeah. people that ran a company, created a company, yeah. and that's yours. And then you you pitched it and showed to them what, yeah. to, to quote Jake Kendrick, what you see, you can't unsee. Yeah. How did you then fall and see it? It was because of this meeting with Glenn. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I was, well, Russ Cofano was a good friend of mine. Russ is early, I was, was, uh, was, actually president for a while of EXP um, and uh, Russ brought me into it uh, and I met him at an Inman conference and that's where I met Glenn at Inman in San Francisco 
And then Russ couldn't even just because he had just started with him like a week before, and he goes, "I really can't explain it all either yet." But here, go in here with him. Go in here. Yeah, with go this go guy. with Glenn. So, <laughs> you got a long, long. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, now that I look back on it at the time, you he know, took you to the boom boom room. I know. It. Yeah, he took you to the boom boom room. He did. He did. Well, we were in, we were like in the conference room, and it was like there, like a convention, and they were like pinning plates up and stuff, and we were like in like like a like the back room of a of a convention hall, and he had his little binder. And, and it wasn't even on a computer. It wasn't even. It wasn't even like on an iPad or anything. It was just paper, paper and paper and pen, you know. So. So you knew at that point that I got to have my practice. Yeah, I, I knew. I knew. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know Glenn that well at the time. But I, after I researched it a little bit and had a little, you know, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I mean, this is amazing. And then, of course, then you get excited, and then it's like, how the hell am I going to sell to them? And that thing. The, the main thing I would leave you with on independence is don't assume that the independent is happy just because they're an independent company. And just because they are, um, I mean, we were not unhappy, but we didn't know we how happy. We were challenged every we day. Sure. Every day we were challenged. Plus, we were trying to sell real estate. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, plus we were trying to make a living. Right. Small you know, business owners right. at that point. We didn't know we enough to not know what we were missing. We so. did get one yeah. agent sued, you know, having to deal with updating yeah. our insurance every year and getting quotes. And, I mean, just the stuff you have to do when you run oh, a business. It's enough to run a real estate business. And here's one more thing, you know, real quick, because I don't run out of time, but people... It's funny, a lot of independent brokers are, will, will think that they're making a lot of money, will think that they have a lot of profit, but they, they, don't, they don't look at the real business. At the end of the day, I mean, we talked, remember Michelle Walker, uh, this agent who had like, had like a 60, uh, had an independent in St. Louis, Missouri, and had like 60 agents. But again, she, you look at her numbers, she gave us her numbers and we analyzed them for her, and I'm going, why is she doing this? She was making, all her agents were on these, Incredibly high splits. Yeah, and, and she wasn't making. She thought she was making money because she had cash coming in every month, but then it was going right back out. She didn't have a, 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 a dime to save, right? And it was like, and it, the headache she had was just unbelievable. I'm like, why are you doing this? And you know, it's it's Maybe so. Maybe we should go back to her now. Oh, we, we need to. Does anybody know why they call them brokers? Because they're broke. They're broke. <laughs> I mean, you're right. That, that's very. You're not broke anymore. You got a lot of stock. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, yeah, the, the stock is the funny part. We, when we got into it, we were like, eh, it's a penny stock. Yeah. It doesn't mean crap. It's really the splits and this rev share. And of course, now we're kicking ourselves when the stock was everything. And you guys have a lot of stock? Uh, I've had some shares. I've had some shares. How much like you in a little bit? Or? I'd say at one point I had 18, 19,000 shares. Yeah. Oh, many of uh, yeah, he, uh, he, but well, I, mean, I did the 5% religiously and four icons and attractive. Yeah. And, wow. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, he He's told so me on the way down here. But I've sold some very like, early, so yeah. I'm We're getting all excited. Yeah, kind of the icon yeah. Yeah. That's, that's when another. I went up to 23, my broker, my whatever investment got so, so. We are out of time, but I know you guys had an office too. Do you guys still have it? I mean, yes. I was there, a big, beautiful office. We that still was true. Do. We it. I was sure, you, you guys had a, I said the broker's broke joke, but they actually, they had a beautiful setup on there. We still impressive. And we just have the, our agents, we charge them a minimal fee. It gives them a professional place to come and meet with their clients. We charge a couple hundred bucks if you want a private office. We each pay 400 because we have bigger, 375 or something. We have bigger offices. We're paying ourselves. We're basically paying. And we don't have Regis. We don't have Regis. Yeah. 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 So if, we had a Re if we had a Regis or something in our area, and we didn't already, we own the building outright, so it isn't like, you know, it's, it's uh, a beach. But, um, the thing is, though, is that we don't have a Regis in our area, so we kind of treated our office as a as a Regis, as a Regis for our we're agents. Actually, might be so. Yeah, it might be. We yeah. might be selling our office and being. So, but if you have people that, uh, if you do have uh, brokers that have an office already, they don't want to get rid of that office. You know, that's okay. I mean, ways to monetize it. So, yeah. Regis, yeah. Regis. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's what I see. So said. you'd have an automatic PhD yes. account. Come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah